as Kia's lineup is just dramatically improving with the Telluride or even the Stinger or even their performance division, we must test out the 2020 Oh, This is the 2023 model, the 2024 will come later. Super quick guys, if you guys are interested in any Kia models at all whatsoever or any pre-owned vehicles, come check out Ridcase Kia at Sunrise, Florida. They have a lot of good deals going on, including a nice warranty package. Obviously with Kia models, you can go all the way to 200,000 mile warranty if you like. So if interested, come check out Kia at Ridcase. The Sorento has always been that affordable, cheap SUV that you just kind of had to buy if you're really on a serious budget and you really couldn't afford a Toyota or maybe something in the premium side. But the Sorento has definitely approved a lot. And even on the interior side, that's something that we have to check out. All right, so now starting up the Kia Sorento and everything like that, this is keep in mind the 2023 model. So this is obviously not the refresh model or anything like that. It has an older front end, older interior setup over here, but relatively everything is still the same. So what do I mean by that? Basically the design and the interior overall the same. The only thing that is missing is not the dual screen. It's pretty much overall the same vehicle. Once I get my hands into that, then you, I will talk about that vehicle more. But at the moment, I'm just gonna t review the 2023 model. But the design in here is very simplistic, a little semi-complicated, but once you understand everything, it's pretty easy to use. For one, you do have a fully digital gauge here up front, tells you a good amount of information, including like a trip meter, has a compass in there if you really wanna know what direction you're going. And you also can actually um, see what how much torque each wheel is producing as you're turning and stuff. Since this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, it does feature that, which I think is pretty good. Um, right here in the middle, you do have your standard Kia infotainment system. It's very quick, it's very easy, easy to use. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard for the Sorentos. And right below that, you do have your hazard button right up top. And you do have dual zone climate control with your auto and you have a couple other settings with your AC. And one thing I wanna talk about with the AC, uh, these vents are kind of strange. So for one, you have at least about eight different vents in the front. Four pointing for your face or your body and four pointing towards your knees. Um, this is something I'm not really used to, but I guess if you really wanna cool your kneecaps and stuff, you, you have the privilege of doing that in the Sorento while at the same time cooling your face, cooling your chest, cooling everything else. I, it's interesting, but I actually like it. It's pretty good. So, and the design of this interior is pretty well suited out. The quality in here is pretty good. I love the brown leather seats that you have inside here. There's a lot of soft touch leather um, materials in here, including soft touch plastics. So it's not like you're gonna be tortured with a really crappy looking interior. This is more of like a luxurious oriented interior. And right behind me too, speaking of luxurious oriented, you do have a massive panoramic sunroof. This thing is humongous. That's something that I have to point out there. With that, also you do have your standard USB A's. There's not a single USB C that I've seen in the Sorento. I'm pretty sure the 2024 switched over to that. The 23 doesn't have that though. So standard USB A. You do have heated and cool seats up in the front. You do have your uh, shifter over here, eight speed automatic. And you also do have your dry modes here in the bottom. So you can just choose between comfort, sport, eco, and smart. And two cup holders here, right here on the side, right next to the shifter little storage compartment and another storage compartment right here at the front with wireless charging. So it's pretty nice, pretty convenient. Right below the drive mode selector, you do have an option to lock your differentials. So that's pretty cool. And you do have your auto start stop that you can turn off. You do have your cameras, which we'll get into in a second. Heated steering wheel, auto hold, trail control, and your parking brake. So, and you're able to turn off your parking sensors if that thing drives you nuts. So pretty good. It has an assortment amount of buns in here that are pretty much laid out fairly well. So you're able to at least understand this vehicle pretty well without really having much of a complication and without this thing having so much of an overwhelming amount of features just slapping your face. This thing is very simple to understand fairly quickly. Within an hour, you should be able to handle majority of the features that are inside the Sorento rather than maybe still sitting here wondering how to shift the car. So I actually like the assortments of this interior really well. The 
quality in here has definitely improved compared to the previous generation Sorento. I gotta be honest with you, I really like this. I really, really like this SUV. Right, so the back seat, or the second row, I should say, of the Kia Sorento, this area actually kind of reminds me of a Honda Pilot. Reason why, one, you do have a cup holder right here that's built with the door, it's right on top, so you're able to store your bottle or whatever. If you wanna store your big gold from Southern Eleven there, you are more than happy to do so. I actually like the placement of the cup holder here. There's a little bit of hard touch plastic over here. So when your knee rests on the side of here, since your knees, my knee is kind of hitting the cup holder area, it's not gonna be the most comfortable spot, but it's not like it's gonna be the end of the world type of thing. You do also have heated rear seats. So that's something pretty nice to have. Not ventilator or anything like that, just heated rear seats. And when it comes to leg space in the Sorento, I have some good space back here. I do have a little USB-A port right here on the side. So if I want to, if I really want to charge my phone here, I can do that with the built-in charging port in the seat. So that's pretty nice. I can also move the seat forward and backwards, and I can also recline the seat if I really want to. So let's say if I really hate my back passenger or no one is there, I can do that and I can just put my armrest up and I could just sit here and take a nap if I really want to. This back seat is really, really nice. It has a really good amount of plush. The diamond quilt, the, you don't really feel the diamond quilt as much in here since this is fully loaded, of course. It has like the little diamond quilt leather seats in here. So it's not terrible at all. It's really comfortable. So I can sit here for an Orlando trip if I really want to or a three hour drive just to identify like that and I'll be perfectly fine. So what you also do have is you have AC vents back here. So if you want to also cool yourself, then uh, you have the privilege of doing that. And something that I'm actually genuinely surprised for a midsize SUV, you have a 115 volt outlet in here. So a house style outlet. So if you really want to decide one day while your dad is driving, you could just blend your smoothie for no reason. You could just do that <laughs> in a Sorento. So you have the ability to do that. You also have another USB-A right here in the bottom, as well as your normal 12 volt outlets. So it's pretty nice to have. I like this backseat a lot. I'm very impressed with how Kia has assorted this backseat area to make, it sure, to make it sure that it's very comfortable, but also very versatile and usable. That's something that Kia, I have to give it to them. They did a really good job. However, when it comes to the third row, um, they had to compromise just a little bit. For one, I am six feet tall and my knee is pretty much touching my chest right now. So in terms of my breathing capabilities, I'm starting to lose breath as I'm talking. <laughs> but anyways, what I would recommend is to really not have anyone in the third row at all whatsoever. That's pretty much a full size adult. So it's really recommended for only smaller children or that one cousin that you absolutely hate in your family's get togethers. Just put him in the back of here if you really have to take him to your vehicle. Anyways, what you do have back here is you have the ability to ha charge your phone here since you have USB-A on each side of the, uh, the back seat. And you also have a small little storage compartment here as well as your cup holder. So you do have a nice assortment in here. It's kind of like a livable thing, but if you really don't, I would not recommend really anyone sitting back here. This is more so maybe for like extra storage or if you really have to put anyone back here, smaller children is recommended or that one cousin that you absolutely cannot stand. But if you want to get out of the vehicle, all you have to do is just press this button and that's it. You're able to fully access the outside of the car. It's pretty good. And now my legs, I'm a lot more comfortable now. Opening the trunk is relatively easy, but it's at a very hidden spot. It's literally right underneath the lip of the trunk lid. So that's just something to keep in mind. But when you open it up and all the seats being up, you do have 12 cubic feet of space with a little storage underneath with the spare tire kit. However, when you take out the third row set of seats, that's when it jumps to 25 cubic feet of space. It's relatively easy. It's just a little strap. You just pull it down and that's how you bring the seats down. Now to take down the second row, it's even easier. All you have to literally do is just press these two buttons and the second row seats go down you're just gonna have to push them down and that's pretty much it and that's where it jumps to 75 cubic feet of space in the sorrento the sorrento comes with quite a few engine options for this particular one though it has a two and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder that produces 281 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque now keep in mind if you want better fuel mileage there's a naturally aspirated a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid so I'm not gonna take this to Main Street, but I am gonna drive it around here in the parking lot just to kind of talk about like the driving capabilities of it. And that's pretty much it. So taking off with the Sorrento in the parking lot. <laughs> um, 
one thing I will say is the seating position in here is really good. I like it. I like the fact that I can sit nice and low, but also see pretty much over the hood and everything like that. And I sit very, very comfortably. So what I will also say is that this headrest right here is very plush. Not many automakers do that nowadays. And I like the fact that this headrest is very plush. So if I really just chilling, driving around and stuff, it's really, really good. So one thing I will also say is that the Kia Sorento does feature a blind spot camera as you're putting on the signal. So pretty much right now, I'm right next to a Chrysler Pacifica. And as I have my signal on, I can see the entire Pacifica just right there. I can also see it with the mirror, but obviously since you guys have blind spots and everything like that, it's a little harder to sometimes see your blind spots and Kia features that, which is great. The auto start stop is a smooth, very, very smooth. So I'm not a fan of auto start stop, but this system is pretty smooth. I'll give them to them, for, I'll, I'll give them that. So I'm not gonna really be able to test the capabilities of the power or anything like that, but what I am able to test is a little bit of the suspension. It's not stiff. It's not like the most softest suspension you're gonna feel, but since this is the top of the line trim known as the X-Pro, um, you're gonna have a little bit more of a plush suspension feel, I guess you could say. This is the first rental I've ever driven. So I, th this is just the initial thoughts that I have pretty much. So going over speed bumps and everything like that, it's very smooth. The engine's very quiet and it idles super, super smooth. So you don't really feel any clicks or anything like that. You don't feel anything at all. This thing feels more of a premium vehicle than what you would think of a Kia. I'll be honest, it's really, really quiet, very smooth. And the turbocharged four cylinder in here from what I've heard, it's a very peppy motor. Now, also keep in mind, if you are looking for efficiency, I will say the turbocharged four cylinder may, may, may not be the way to go. The reason why is because you get around 22 in the city and 27 on the highway, so you can't even reach 30 miles a gallon in here. So that's something to just keep in mind. But there are different flavors of the Sorento that you can get. Mind you, there is a plug-in hybrid model and there is a hybrid model. I don't know how those things drive. I don't know what's the MPG on those things. I'll put it right here in the description or like right here in the video, I'm sorry. So you'll be able to see what is the actual MPG capabilities that you can get within the plug-in hybrid and the hybrid model. So if that's something that you're looking for, they have the option for that also. So overall, this is a really nice vehicle to have comparing to maybe the Volkswagen Tiguan, which is I would think is the closest competitor to this. I would prefer getting the Sorento well over the Tiguan. Reason being is because the space in here is great. The interior quality has improved a lot for a Kia. And to be really honest, reliability, this is a little bit more reliable than that. Um, so I would be honest with you, I would prefer to get the Sorento well over the Tiguan any day just for overall, especially the warranty that you get with these things. You have a 100,000 mile warranty, a 60,000 mile basic bumper to bumper warranty. You can't really honestly beat it. And with how versatile this interior is, just like the Tiguan and with more of it and with an engine that's even more peppy, you can't honestly beat it. So with the 360 camera, as I'm parking right now, I do see the lines very well. Lines do follow me as I'm just kind of par parking in reverse. I'm not parking this thing good at all whatsoever. So I'm gonna just kind of adjust this a little bit. So anyways, so what this thing also has is you do have your Bose sound system as well. So speakers all around the vehicle, including I believe two, one or two subwoofers in the back of the trunk. So if you're sitting in the third row, you're gonna have a lot of bass behind you. But overall, this vehicle is great to have. If you're looking for a vehicle that has decent versatility, that's not ex stupidly expensive. The Sorento is not a bad option. As I'm closing the video, give it a shot.